In this short video, I want to talk about organizational behavior and just introduce some of the ideas behind organizational behavior. So, let's start with the obvious question. What is organizational behavior? Well, an organization, organizational behavior, OB, is the study of human behavior in organizational settings of the interface between human behavior and the organization and of the organization itself. Now that's a, a rather sophisticated definition put forward by Moorhead 2007 but it does encompass a lot of what organizational behavior attempts to do or, or look at. Uh, human behavior in organizational settings and th that means it looks at the interface between human behavior and the organization and of the organization itself. It looks at the behavior of the organization itself. Uh, we could extend this uh, definition, but it would become inordinately long. We could talk about it's an interface between human behavior and the organization, and human behavior in the social setting of the organization, because people work with people in organizations. So it's not just working with the rules and regulations of the organization, it's working in a social context as well. And there, there are all sorts of psychological uh, impacts made on the workforce uh, in that setting. For example, the welfare or the well-being of the organization. If the organization is not doing well in the marketplace, so that there is the risk of redundancy or of uh, laybacks, uh, uh, if, if that is the case, then uh, morale within the organization may be affected. And that's a part of the organizational behavior. That, that colors the way people see their work, see their positions, they see the organization. And so we could make this a very sophisticated and, uh, in fact, more sophisticated than it already is, definition. But it would become inordinately complex and long-winded. So to keep it the way it is, I think we should subscribe to the Moorhead view. This really hits the, the, the core of what is meant by organizational behavior. It's the study of human behavior in an organizational setting. And the interface between human behavior and the organization. It's how the individual workers, the employees, the managers and so on, interact uh, between themselves and with the rules and regulations of the organization. Another definition of organizational behavior is put forward by Knutson in uh, 1986. Organizational behavior is a subset of management activities concerned with understanding, predicting, and influencing individual behavior in organizational settings. So it's, it's a subset of management activities concerned with the understanding, predicting, and influencing individual behavior. And that's a definition I think we, we, can, we can relate to almost immediately. Uh, organizational behavior is trying to understand what's happening within the organization. It's trying to understand that interface that we talked about in the context of the Moorhead definition earlier is that interface between the individuals and the organization but also the individuals amongst themselves and here we're talking about a subset of management activities concerned with understanding predicting and influencing individual behavior so the management are trying to influence individual individual behavior inside the organization influence their behavior for the good of the organization. Uh, of course, like all definitions, we could expand it and we can uh, modify it and change it. We, we could say, for example, trying to inf influence individual behavior in for the good of the organization, but also for the good of uh, each worker within that organizational community. In other words, uh, it reduces the possibility of conflict or of uh, uh, stress or of, of some 
misalignment between individual goals and organizational goals. It tries to reconcile what the individual wants with what the organization wants. The organization wants stability, wants growth, wants prosperity, it wants efficiency, it wants good reputation in the marketplace. And individuals working within the organization uh, are encouraged to empathize with those objectives. But the Knudsen definition is straightforward and it's a good definition of organizational behavior and it's one worth uh, bearing in mind. Organization behavior is the study of human interaction within the workplace setting. So it's looking at human interaction, uh, humans relating to humans, but also humans relating to each other as functionaries. Sometimes uh, the workforce will relate to other members of the workforce, but realizing that their status is one of line workers versus management. And then there'll be lower management, middle management, senior management. And uh, each of these have different roles to play within the organization. But there is a connection between them. They're all presumably working towards the same goal. And it's the function of senior management in particular to ensure that everyone understands the goals, the, the strategic direction in which the organization is moving and tries to encourage the organization to move in that direction in harmony. So it is looking at individual behavior within the organization and trying to reconcile or uh, cancel out uh, behaviors that are not in keeping with the overall objectives of the organization. Cancelling them out in the sense of perhaps having retraining or instructions about what the organizational goals are. Um, ensuring that everyone is, is clear about what is expected of them and they've got the, the right skills and aptitudes and training in order to work towards the uh, fulfillment of those objectives. Individuals do not work in isolation. They require interaction within their systems. Uh, there is communication between management, other employees, clients, customers, procedures and policies within the organization. There is constant uh, talk, uh, explanations, meetings, elaborations. There's constant connection between members of the workforce. And there is an onus on senior management, as I said earlier, to clarify the direction in which they want to, the organization to move. But it's reconciling uh, individual requirements with those of the organization and ensuring that there is, as I said earlier, clarity in the vision that is projected to the individuals. But individuals do not work in isolation. They work as a part of the work community. And they require interaction with their fellow workers. And they require interaction with the system. They need to know what, the, what is expected of them. And it needs to be clear. So there must be good channels of communications. And it's the the requirements of the organization should flow within those channels uh, smoothly and without any corruption to the message. Organizational behavior is an important area of study. It is vital for an organization to understand its environment and how to manage change effectively. Um, so it's, it's very important that the organization understands the environment in which it's working and how to manage that environment. So it should understand that the environment is made up from internal forces and external forces. And we could go through um, a SWOT analysis and we can go through a PESTEL analysis to try and get an insight in what, what is meant by this. In the context of what we're doing here, it's just that the organization should understand 
that it's not simply um, a question of uh, setting out uh, rules and regulations. It's a question of understanding them and explaining the logic and uh, understanding that they are dealing with people. And also they've got an external uh, set of stakeholders, the local community, the shareholders, uh, the, the customers. And they should know as well what the organization is attempting to do. So organizational behavior can be seen as a very wide activity, but certainly starts within the organization. Now the importance of organizational behavior. Well, all individuals are part of some kind of organization, be it a family, religious group, a social club, a job, a sports club, um, whatever it is, some recreational group. But individuals tend to form into some sort of organizations. Generally speaking, sometimes people prefer to, to opt out. But by and, f by and far, the, the, the vast majority of the population tend to be members of some sort of groups. People become part of an organization for various reasons, such as satisfying a need, uh, social or emotional, or physical needs, or monetary needs. People have a job perhaps because they need the money. Some people may join a club because they've got an emotional need. Um, perhaps they just have spare time and they want to occupy themselves constructively. So there are various reasons why individuals will join organizations. But it's important that the organization, in turn, can, um, can relate to the requirements of the, the individuals and be able to accommodate those. Uh, individuals spend most of their lifetime within organizations and to study about an organization can help individuals become more effective. So individuals spend um, their lifetime working with others. And it's important that the organizations recognize that they are spend individuals are spending their lives in this context and should accommodate that, should, should relate to it. And there is a onus on the organization to treat the individuals within the organization with respect and that the individuals within the organization should respect each other and respect the organization that gives them employment. There's a mutuality involved in the whole process. Organizational behavior encompasses all aspects of the organization. It's not just the relationship between the line staff and the senior management or the, the line management. It's, it's, not, it's not just that. It's, it's how the individuals relate to each other as well as to the organization. And the different strata within the organization can link to each other and to the organization and also to the, the people above and below in the hierarchical structure. So it's important that the organizational behavior encompasses all aspects of the organization. The concept cannot be broken down into a particular department or function. The, the concept is more holistic. It deals with the organization in total. It deals with the individuals, the management, the customers. In fact, it should look at all of the stakeholders in the business and take all of them into account when devising policies or making statements. Every aspect of an organization and its effectiveness uh, come under theories of organizational behavior. And that is a, an academic area in the study of organizations. Uh, it's a complex study and it's one that uh, uh, students of management and business will spend a lot of time considering all of the various theories and ideas put forward in that literature. Uh, in this particular session, this short video, clearly we're not going to do that, but there are many videos on the course that cover aspects of organizational behavior that you must and should encounter and work on. But that's all we're really going to deal with in 
this session. The sources I mentioned earlier are those, um, Knudsen and Moorhead. But as I said, this is just a very brief introductory chat about uh, organizational behavior. The real nitty-gritty of organizational behavior is involved in the much more detailed video material that we've supplied on the course and which is av available uh, throughout various modules on the course. But that's all we're going to deal with here, so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.